there's no better education than getting out and seeing the world. The experiences are what you're going to remember in the long run. Getting out to see the world has just really opened my eyes to a lot of things. I know a little bit about a lot of random things, and that's because of travel. travel, travel. We're going to be able to learn so much about some really great destinations. Destination. I'm excited about how this will improve our group itineraries. I'm really looking forward to having great conversations about places. Welcome to Destination Dispatch. Hello, I'm Jim Delaman with Group Travel Odyssey. Thank you for joining us for another episode. And before we get started, just a quick reminder, if you're watching on YouTube right now, hit that subscribe button down below. And also if you ring the bell, you'll be notified anytime that we have new content on our YouTube channel. If you're watching us on Facebook, make sure to like this and also to follow that Facebook page. And LinkedIn, you can connect with us on LinkedIn as well at Group Travel Odyssey. Thank you so much for doing that. Uh, today, we are going to do something a little bit different. We're actually going to be going overseas, and we're going to learn a lot about Helsinki, Finland, and what makes it so fantastic for groups. Now, I can't do this myself, so I'm going to be bringing on our co-hosts first. We have um, one of our community architects and a dear friend of mine, Angelica Kennedy. Angelica, how are you? I'm great, Tim. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. I'm very excited to learn about um, Helsinki today. And I know that's not far from where you grew up and from where you were born. Um, not many people know that you are Swedish. And so where where were you born and where are you originally? Where did you grow up? Yeah, so I'm originally from Stockholm, from Sweden. I was born there and spent about six years of my life there. And I still go back and spend every summer there. Um, and Helsinki and Stockholm aren't that far away from each other. And culturally, the two countries are actually very similar. Uh, and I've been to Helsinki a few times and it's gorgeous. So I'm excited to go back virtually today. Wonderful. Wonderful. And also let's bring on the host of Destinations Beyond Expectations podcast, Stevie G. Hey, Stevie, how are you? Hey, Jim. Hey, Angelica. Happy Thursday. I'm good. How are you guys? Doing well. Doing well. So have you been to Finland? Have you been to Helsinki? Have not. Have no. not, no. So Angelica is the only one with actual experience today, but I have to say I'm I'm really looking forward to finding out so much more. And I know it is a fantastic destination for groups um, from the information that they sent on uh, before we actually got ready for this. So um, let's bring on our guests today and get this conversation rolling. First, we have from the Helsinki Partners, Aino, and also from Finland DMC, Jana. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you. And greetings from Helsinki. And definitely, Angelica, we need to see you back in Helsinki this summer if you're coming to Stockholm. And, and, and I'll soon tell you how easy it is to get from, from our neighbor country to here to Helsinki. But great to have you here and thank you for the invitation. Thank, thank you. you for having us. Well, you know, it's, it's interesting that you mentioned ease of getting there. So how convenient is it to reach Helsinki for a travel destination? Well, uh, well, of course, Hel Helsinki. So we are the capital of Finland, uh, located here in the Nordic countries in the northern part of Europe. And if we especially look um, like point of view of U.S. market, there we have a great uh, national airline, Finnair, flying approx uh, 25 flights in a week, uh, uh, direct from Helsinki uh, and from U.S. to Helsinki. So definitely, and the flight time isn't that bad. Even the longest flight from L.A. to Helsinki is around 10 hours, and uh, then then. So this is this definitely well, uh, like it located well here. And then when you are in here in Hel Helsinki, the combinations are there are a lot of combinations to combine to other Nordic countries or then to the rest of Europe. Awesome. Um, I obviously mentioned that I have visited Helsinki before, mm -hmm. but I saw it as an individual, right? Mm -hmm. And so I'm a little bit curious about what makes Helsinki a, a good choice for groups specifically. Well, what a great question. And definitely Helsinki is a beautiful destination, both for FITs or, and, and for groups. And of course, already I want to maybe give one a mindset here to why it'd be great to come here as a group to, to explore why Helsinki is the capital of the happiest country in the world. So uh -huh. Finland has been awarded as now six year in a row as the happiest country in the world. And definitely maybe this is a place to come here if this is a 
compact uh, capital city, human-sized capital city with a lot of culture, a lot of nature. You know, most of people, of course, know Finland uh, as being uh, the country of, of forest with uh, snow, Lapland, Santa Claus, northern lights. Uh, but then this is a capital. So this is a great entrance to your Finland experience as Helsinki being the vibrant, beautiful capital with a lot of attractions, sites, great hotels, restaurants. So a lot to see and do. So I know I want to ask a little bit about like the U.S. traveler, right? Like for mm -hmm. me, I've never been there before. I, to be honest, mm -hmm. I don't know too much about Helsinki. Mm -hmm. What should the U.S. traveler know about visiting Helsinki? What are maybe some hidden gems or lesser known facts or just, you know, talk about why Helsinki is such an attractive destination or can be for U.S. travelers? Well, perfect. Well, compared to many U.S. cities in in there, uh, Helsinki is for you might be just a small town as this is the capital of Finland, but we have around six six hundred thousand people living here, um, around one million in the capital area, and only five point five million in, in total in Finland. Finland is one of the biggest countries uh, in the Europe by size, but small by population. So maybe the first uh, sh beautiful shock is that when you're arriving to Helsinki airport, it feels uh, compact. It feels that there's a nature, uh, there's a kind of this urban vibrant feeling, the bizarre language of Finnish, one of the hardest language to learn, uh, but uh, still uh, the airport is only 30 minutes away from city center. So within the 30 minutes, you are here in the bustling city center. We have around 300 islands. So the sea, the Baltic Sea is all around in Helsinki. And that's a great, there are great products for, for, for US clients to get to know the mix of uh, city break and urban nature here in the Nordic countries. And of course, maybe one great fact to know, we have a great public transport here in Finland and we have the mo most northernmost metro in the world. So I definitely, definitely recommend everybody to try our public transport uh, from the trams to ferries to buses. And of course, they'll, there are all kinds of private, private uh, options to try, for example, a pub tram. So maybe that's a great way to do uh, sightseeing, uh, having a Finnish beer and sitting on a tram and go around a uh, Helsinki. That sounds like the perfect day for me. So. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, so, Jim. <laughs> thank you. Well, what kind of, um, what unique experiences can people find in Helsinki that they won't be able to find anywhere else? Well, as I've been already highlighting as uh, Helsinki <laughs> being the, uh, combination of city culture and nature of course when we are talking about culture we have great museums here uh, the biggest amount of restaurants uh, cafeterias we Finns we drink the most cafe per capita in the world so there are great cafeterias and uh, and then of course when we talk about culture we talk about sauna and wellness in Finland so that's definitely something and Helsinki being the capital of the country it's no no surprise that we have a great uh, both public saunas and the design saunas so definitely when you're coming to Helsinki sauna needs to be on your must-do list and then the other side all the islands all of the possibilities uh what you can do there over 300 islands uh, most of them you can uh, take the public ferry from here from the market square and uh, then in minutes you'll have a great uh, sea point of view to, to helsinki mainland tell me a little bit more about the history of helsinki and ways that we can explore that if we were to travel mm. to yeah. Well, um, Helsinki it was founded 1550 by the former king uh, of Sweden back then. And of course, Finland as a country, uh, we were a long time under the rule of, of Sweden, under the rule of Russia. And then uh, in 1970, we gained our independence as a country. Helsinki is quite a modern city uh, compared, for example, to Tallinn, the capital of Estonia, which is uh, on the other side of uh, around uh, two hours uh, fairway from Helsinki. Um, but uh, so in a way, Helsinki, but the Helsinki history, the best way to see it is actually again in one island. So the he UNESCO World Heritage Site called Suomelina Sea Fortress is located 15 minutes away from Helsinki city center. And you can take the public ferry there and then you can see 
a beautiful UNESCO World Heritage Site, which is as well same as, uh, but at the same time, it's, it's a um, neighborhood for 800 Helsinkians. So it's a vivid island with a beautiful history. And there it's definitely recommended to have a guided tour to learn about how Finland gained its independence, how we, uh, how do we have this unique language that, that is not anyhow related to Swedish or, or Russian and how, um, how the Helsinki uh, gained its uh, the, the crown to be a capital. And, and so definitely Suomenlinna is the part where the place to go. So I know Jana is going to walk us through an itinerary here shortly, but I did want to ask, like, what are some of the, maybe the popular attractions or activities that people should consider adding to their uh, Helsinki itineraries when they visit? Yeah. So Helsinki city center is a compact. There are different sides to that. So you can do with the nature or you can do with design. We have a beautiful design district uh, here in Helsinki. Uh, but then if you want to do more, so you want to extend the visit uh, and then there in, in the Helsinki capital area, there are a couple of very charming small cities Porvo in the east, uh, eastern part of Helsinki, around one hour away from Helsinki, or then the western part of Helsinki, it starts the beautiful Finnish archipelago. But of course, as I own already mentioned, um, from Helsinki, there, is the, there are several ferries in a day to Tallinn, which is the capital of Estonia. And it's quite exotic. Uh, uh, ferry ride as you leave from Helsinki, which is a uh, modern Jugen style as uh, West Western mm. city, and in two hours you are in Tallinn, which is more to a medieval Hanseatic city, very beautiful. So the combination definitely works from from day tour from Helsinki to, and add on to, to a Tallinn. That's great. And then I have I have to ask what. I, you, you've said that there are fantastic restaurants mm. and things like that. What, what is, what is traditional Finnish food, and and what should mm. people look for when they come for dining experiences in Helsinki? Well, 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 well. Of course, we are here at the capital. So, for example, I am born and raised in Helsinki, and for me, the the Helsinki food is all about uh, it's it's sustainable, it's fresh, it's local ingredients. We have four seasons in Finland, so as in Helsinki. So there are a lot to get from the nature in a sustainable way. Uh, when we go, maybe the most uh, common fin Finnish dish, uh, dishes are, you know, salmon here, salmon, and then all kind of uh, from the Karelian side, Karelian uh, pies, uh, these traditional dishes. And definitely, definitely I think, uh, within the soon as we'll learn about uh, the tours, uh, itineraries that maybe Janna can explore, explain as well some secrets of Finnish cuisine. But uh, fin Finnish cuisine is all, it's all about respecting the nature and the forest and, you know, fresh berries, fresh mushrooms. And so is, so is it the same here in Helsinki. Okay, so I have to ask, because as a Swede, I get asked all the time, when is a good time to travel to Sweden? Mm -hmm. And it's a tough question to answer because mm. I tend to personally prefer the summertime because, of course, very similarly to you, we have daylight for a long time mm. and everything's green and lush. But that's also when airfares can sort of spike. So tell me what your answer to that question would be, if it's similar to mine or if you have a different perspective as mm. a DMO than I do as a private yeah. person. Well, of course, as I already mentioned we have four seasons in Finland so as in Helsinki so um, at the moment for example the day length it's around 20 hours we are going towards the midsummer and the, the beautiful white night uh, but um, it, it, so it's tricky if you've only, only come to Helsinki every January to see when the day length is three hours you might think that <laughs> is it the joke that we Finns really are the happiest country in the world when it's cold and dark and and snowy but so it's of course depending what are you looking you know uh, during winter people usually do the combination coming first to Helsinki as we have the biggest airport of Finland maybe staying a couple of nights here enjoying the, our hotels our great restaurant and then continuing to Lapland where you can get your Finnish uh, the, the Lapland uh, winter experience, or then, but then as well, four seasons brings four sides to Helsinki. Depending on on what are you looking, then there's always something 
for, for, for you here in Helsinki and Finland. So I know one of the questions I wanted to ask you was, mm -hmm. so say, for example, if I were to visit Helsinki or Finland, I would you know try to brush up on my Finnish and use, learn a couple Finnish phrases, of course, to be respectful. Mm -hmm. But as someone who might not be a, a fluent speaker in Finnish, how mm -hmm. far would English kind of, you know, get me if I were to visit Helsinki? Well, Steve, we, well, Finnish is not the easiest language to learn. And uh, there was just a study from the city of Helsinki that 70% of Helsinkians can hold an English uh, conversation up to two minutes. So I can really, you can really trust, uh, trust us here that you can have your service in English. And of course, uh, it's a bilingual country. So I need to, of course, tell that if you want to learn one Nordic language, maybe learn the Swedish because it's a bit easier than, <laughs> than Finnish. And a lot of us Finns we, uh, speak Swedish as well. But if you come to Helsinki, you definitely can cope with English. If you say a word or two in Finnish, uh, we will all love you because we know that it's not the easiest language to learn. So <laughs> welcome. <laughs> That's fantastic. I've got I've got one more question before we uh, take our little station break here. But um, I want to know if, if there is one thing that you could point out that you feel everybody should take advantage of when they come to Helsinki. What is one thing that you think that they definitely need to do while they're there? So when people are asking from me, what is the Eiffel Tower of Helsinki? The question usually is. Uh, the answer for people is usually very uh, bizarre for Finns, uh, for, for the people, as I say, it's our library. And when I talk about library, I talk about our Audi, which is our new central library uh, that uh, we got from our, the country uh, when we turned 100, Finland turned 100 in 2017. When I say library, people feel like, oh, it it's, sounds bizarre. It's, it's maybe quite uh, dull and not the place you want to visit. But this is Helsinki. This is Finland. All the central libraries being awarded the best new library in the world. It's not a library. It's a living room for, for Helsinkians. As I mentioned, we are the happiest country in the world. So if you want to, you know, crack the code that why we Finns are the happiest in the world, go to Audi to see the three floors of, you know, Finnish uh, from kids to grandmas. It's it's one, one floor is on the library, but then the second floor is, you know, there's a kitchen, there's a studio, there's a gaming rooms. Uh, for your group, you can book the kitchen and do, you know, Finnish um, cuisines there and you do some workshop there. So. Audi is a definitely place to go. The only thing you don't find from there is a sauna, which is bizarre okay. because we have more saunas than cars cars in Finland. But this was one that they let, let they wanted to keep out from the library. But definitely, that's no, uh, no saunas in the library. So. Yeah, <laughs> but you know we have a sauna in the Burger King here, so it's <laughs> <laughs> it's oh, a wow. crazy country. And well, that's... we're we're going to continue our conversation in just a couple moments. But right now, how about a word about some of our partners, Stevie? Group Travel Odyssey would like to take a moment to thank our amazing partners, including Book My Group, Travel Advocates, We Travel, Broadway Inbound, and Fly My Group. These partnerships help make business without boundaries possible, and we encourage our viewers to learn more about these wonderful companies. Now, back to Destination Dispatch. Okay, we are going to continue our conversation now by going through a sample itinerary. And I believe that Jana is going to take us through um, a, I think it's five-day itinerary uh, for Helsinki and Lakeland. So um, take it away, Jana. Perfect, thank you. So my name is Jana and I work for company Finland DMC. And probably as you can get from the name, we are incoming obviously. Finland, obviously, uh, my beautiful home country. And uh, as I already briefly mentioned, several interesting points about Finland. If we scroll a little bit down, we see a little bit of a map there. Uh, I created this group tour itinerary to display how Helsinki could be combined with one of the regions of Finland. And I chose the Lakeland now as the summertime is a really beautiful uh, time to visit the Lakeland. Uh, if we scroll down to the map, so normally when we talk about Finland as a travel destination, uh, we uh, divide Finland in a couple of different regions. Uh, the first region is the Helsinki area in the south of the country. Uh, then we have archipelago area, which is basically all the coastal area. 
And then Lakeland area is basically from the central Finland all the way to the east border and quite high up in the north. So that would be the Lakeland area. Uh, in the map, you see that there's a lot of blue color. So that's basically lakes all over. And then the last area of Finland is Lapland, which is in the north of Finland. So normally when we talk about um, individuals or groups traveling to Finland, I normally recommend people obviously to visit beautiful Helsinki and then combine one maximum two regions of Finland. Finland is a rather big country, so unless you want to take an internal flight or, you know, avoid driving too much, I would concentrate, you know, um, to focus in like Helsinki plus one area. And this tour that I created now it starts from Helsinki and then goes to the Lakeland, so to the east and makes a little loop to come back. So what could be something interesting for the groups when they come to Helsinki is that they arrive to Helsinki airport. It takes 30 minutes to get to Helsinki city center and check into your hotel. As Aino mentioned, there are several really beautiful hotels in Finland. I couldn't put too many pictures here, unfortunately, but there are like uh, art hotels. There are really basic hotels for groups. There are um, more like sort of family owned places with the really quirky and beautiful interior designs. And there are new hotel projects coming up to Helsinki all the time. So there is something for everyone, definitely. Uh, I also mentioned about the saunas in Finland and Helsinki is known for the great public saunas. And here, the first picture you see, you see I looked at the wooden picture. That's a public sauna called Löylö. And that's one of the public saunas that is also architecturally interesting place. And for bigger groups, you can even uh, get the whole public sauna for your own use. But of course, it's interesting for people to blend in together with the locals to have a sauna. And they also have a really beautiful uh, restaurant there to enjoy dinner and some cocktails. Uh, this public sauna experience worked during the summertime, of course, but also during the winter. So when you take your sauna, you go to the sea, you dip yourself in a, a cold sea and go back to the sauna. That's mm -hmm. going to be really healthy. You can choose if it's something for you to try or not, but definitely something in the bucket list experiences, I would say. Uh, full Helsinki day, if you scroll a little bit down, uh, basically I would recommend to do a Helsinki city tour. Uh, Helsinki is a compact city to go by foot, but obviously with groups it's handy to move the group by bus, of course, to different places so you can cover a little bit larger area at once. And doing the city tour, uh, I would recommend to see obviously the Audi library and even do a guided tour inside the Audi library. It's really worth it. Also, you can visit um, Helsinki Cathedral, which is probably the most known landmark. It's the white church that you see in every picture. There are also interesting churches in there. And then, of course, to take advantage of the seaside of Helsinki, as Aina quickly mentioned, of the UNESCO World Heritage Site, Suomen Limna Sea Fortress. In the end, or before your city tour, you can hop on a ferry, take a 10-15 minutes ferry ride, enjoy the archipelago around you, and then you arrive to Su Suomen Limna Fortress. That uh, showcases a great piece of Finnish history, but also local lives. As Aina mentioned, there are actually people living on the islands as well. So you can see basically historical site, but also data life of some Finnish people. Uh, evening time, uh, you can enjoy some restaurants. And there is, for example, one interesting restaurant that I think it's, it's not written in here, but there is a restaurant called Nolla, which means zero uh, in Finnish. So basically it's a zero waste restaurant. So at least those who are looking for something a bit more different type of kitchen styling or whatever, uh, zero, waste restaurant, zero waste restaurant is definitely a place to go and try this uh, local food in there. Um, basically, a couple of nights in Helsinki is normally enough. If you would like to extend your trip, you can consider the day trip to Tallinn, as Aino mentioned, or then it's time to move to a different part of Finland. Uh, if you go to Lakeland from Helsinki, it's the easiest way to take a bus, of course. If you would go to Lapland, you would take an overnight train or take an internal flight. Uh, this tour, for example, is to take a bus from Helsinki and to reach Lakeland, it takes like three, four hours, depending which route you take and whereabout in Lakeland you go. Uh, on the way uh, to the Lakeland, you can visit some really interesting places, and I mentioned here a few of them. Uh, one is a really small village called Lemmy, and if you scroll a little bit down, you can see uh, there is a some restaurants that serve a traditional Sara meal. You can see the piece of meat in the middle. So Sara is basically a cooked lamb, and it's cooked on an open fire light for like nine hours or something, and it's super delicious, and it's served with some potatoes and homemade bread. And that's actually quite iconic what kind of the Finnish uh, cuisine is normally. So basically, as we are located far in the north, the cuisine is actually quite, let's go basic and simple. But you know, when you prepare it really nicely and using seasonal ingredients becomes really tasty, even you don't do a lot of, a lot of things on it. So basically, Finnish cuisine is in, in general quite simple, 
but thanks to the seasonality and great ways of cooking, it becomes really tasty. Mm. Going a little bit up um, on the way, you can also stop in some other interesting cities. There's, for example, city of Lappeenranta. Uh, it's a city located on the biggest lake, Lake Saima. And there you also have an interesting fortress area, beautiful harbor area to enjoy the Lakeland area. Uh, and also, Aina mentioned that Finnish people are the biggest coffee drinkers in the world. We drink on average 12 kilos of coffee per person per year. And in La Peranda, there is one of the best coffee breweries. So that's a great place to try a uh, really nice Finnish coffee. Uh, continuing forward to the Lakeland, there is also really um, smaller interesting places. There is, for example, this fascinating uh, statue park in a small place called Parikkala. Um, it's basically garden area created by a Finnish artist and he created more than 500 statues uh, from concrete and they are located you know there are like different types of installations of the statues all over the garden it's a huge area and uh, one curiosity that some people find a little creepy is that many of the statues they even have like you know they really have a face and everything and they have teeth in their mouth and oh. the teeth are actually human teeth <laughs> Well, that's interesting. Many people who went there, they say it's a really beautiful place, but they wouldn't go there during the night time. So it's <laughs> probably better, better time to visit this place. Then if we uh, continue a little bit down to the next slide, uh, there are many different types of places to stay. Obviously in Lakelands, there are different types of resorts, resorts, hotels, also some cottages. But I chose here a couple of the places that are more suitable for the groups. Uh, the first one uh, is a resort called Nature and Hotel uh, Spa Resort Järvi Sudan. Uh, Finland DMC is owned by the entrepreneur of Järvi Sudan. The name Järvi Sudan, uh, literally translated Järvi, is a lake in Finnish, and Sudan is a heart, so it's like a lake heart. Uh, and this resort is a bigger resort. It has in total about 500 beds in many different room types. There are like uh, glass roof igloos, there are hotel rooms floating villas, so-called like houseboats. There are rooms with big panoramic windows and outdoor jacuzzis. So there are many different uh, room types to accommodate groups, also families. There is something for everyone. Mm -hmm. The resort also has a really beautiful lake spa, um, a couple of restaurants, and then as it's open the whole year round, you have outdoor activities in summer, winter, autumn, you name it. Other option in the same area, maybe 10 minutes walk from Yarvi Sudan, uh, there is a resort, Kuru private resort. It's a small uh, private resort that has currently 20 rooms and one bigger accommodation unit is under construction at the moment. And it's private for the matter that you can access the area only if you have accommodation booking or a booking for the dinner in the restaurant. Uh, the rooms in Kuru, they are all individual rooms. And as you can see from these pictures here, there's a big glass window pointing towards a private lake and forest. So literally when you sit on your bed, you are kind of the, the, the forest enters your room, you could say. And the second picture here, you see there's a bathtub. So when you're taking your bath, you can actually admire the beautiful lake view there. Uh, as Kuru is smaller, uh, basically, if there is a group that requires like 10 to 20 rooms, basically almost the whole resort is private for the group. So that's really nice for adults only groups as Kuru Resort doesn't accommodate uh, children at all. Okay. And then what you can do in a lakeland, so basically in the summertime, um, these resorts are located on the shore of Lake Saima, again, the biggest lake of Finland. So the lake and the forest offers, of course, a lot of different uh, outdoor activities that you can enjoy. So during the summer, you can, for example, take a boat trip uh, to, to the lake and close by the resorts, there is a national park called Linnansaari. And basically the national park consists of islands on the water. So when you take your boat, um, you can do a trip on some islands, do some hiking for the groups. You can do outdoor lunches there um, and do some hiking there, maybe some foraging. Depending on the season, you can pick up some mushrooms or berries. And later on for groups, of course, the kitchen can even prepare something from the things that people collect along the way. Yeah. After the day in the nature, uh, it's time to go to relax in the, in the spa of the resort. If you scroll a little bit down, we see a, one picture of the spa. So the lake spa consists of six different saunas. There's inside and outdoor pools and obviously spa treatments, a pool bar. And after the regular opening hours of the spa, it can be booked uh, private for the groups only. And then of course, uh, during the winter time when the lake is frozen, uh, you can do things on the lake, on the ice. So you can do, for example, tour skating, you can do snowmobiling, you can do electric fat biking on the lake, um, snowshoeing, ice fishing. So there is a lot of things to be done. 
throughout the year. I kept this itinerary rather short, uh, but of course you could spend several days in the resort enjoying the, the offers of the resort, or you can do some day trips to discover the area and the culture a little bit better. So from these resorts, it's really nice to do a day trip to cities called Savonlinna and Punkaharju. Uh, Savonlinna is about one hour drive from, from the resorts. And the main, the most famous landmark of Savonlinna is the medieval castle Olavinlinna. Uh, in Finland, we don't have too many castles in general, so we are quite proud to have the castle in this specific place. And what makes the castle special is that during the summertime, they host a world famous opera festival, which brings the city full of different restaurants and a lot of, of course, a lot of people. And it's a great place to, you know, enjoy uh, internationally recognized artists in, at the same time enjoying the Lake Saima and its nature. Uh, after the city tour and the castle tour in Savolinna, you can move to a small place called Punkaharju. If we scroll a bit down, we see some pictures of the place. So Bunkaharju is basically known for its rich, uh, uh, rich roach, the roads. So basically the ice age formulated the landscape so that there is lake and then also some ridges that you can drive along, enjoy the beautiful view. And there are also really beautiful hiking paths to go and explore the forest and the ridges. And it's also a really nice place for foraging to pick up some mushrooms and berries. So that can be like a really outdoor day uh, as, as well over there. And in Bunkaharu, there is also located a very interesting uh, forest museum called Lusto. So that's a really great place to get to know in a, from a museum point of view, what is, the, uh, what is the forest in Finland and how does the forest make part of everyday life of Finnish people and of course of the forest industry in general. And they have of course different uh, changing exhibitions uh, of different arts and so on. So this is a nice um, day trip to do and it basically you can do all this within just a couple of hour transfer so you need to you don't need to drive like nine hours to do all this so it's basically you leave after breakfast and you come back come back to the resort early in the afternoon wow then uh basically to come back to helsinki uh or of course continue maybe more further in finland if there is more days uh to spend in finland uh, going back to Helsinki takes around four hours and along the way you can have a stop in a couple of beautiful manor houses. Um, maybe one hour from the resort you have maybe three different types of manors and they are quite famous nowadays that they have preserved the manors really nicely. But they also do a lot of uh, homemade uh, products that they might you know, grow their own herbs and then they do some salad dressing from the herbs and then they do their own jams. One manner even grow their own roses and make some uh, rose sparkling, which is really tasty. So you have a place to do like shopping for some little local products if you like to have something to bring at home. And then you end up to Helsinki, uh, where you could still spend a night or two, take a flight to Lapland if you want, take a ferry to Stockholm or to Tallinn, continue your trip or go back home, of course. Wow. <laughs> that's a, that's a lot. I mean, <laughs> I'm, I hope I could squeeze in the main key points, and I'm I couldn't put too many pictures over there, but hopefully the few that I chose is somehow inspiring to see all the possibilities that there are. That's that's really fantastic. I mean, I I think that, like you said, it gives you it gives you Helsinki, but it also gives you a chance to explore a little bit more around Finland and close Definitely. enough that you can get back to Helsinki. So you know you can. You can keep that as your as your base. So that's exactly. that's just fantastic. Thank you both. If if our if our watchers, if our viewers want more information from either of you, how can they reach you? Uh, for me, you can Google Finland DMC, so Finland Destination Management Company, or you can contact directly uh, by email sales at Finland um, minus DMC dot com. Okay, great. Perfect. And uh, for to get to know more about Helsinki, our official website is called myhelsinki.fi. Uh, that's your uh, local uh, fountain of knowledge and inspiration for Helsinki. And if you want to get know more about Helsinki, uh, I'm, of course, here to help you. My email is first name, last name at helsinkipartners.com. That's fantastic. Well, I want to thank you both for coming on today and giving us a lot more information and, and hopefully opening up our operators to, to some really wonderful overseas group business because, you know, go explore, um, find out what's out there, find out what's different. It's, it's, it's going to be a life-changing experience for you to take some of these trips and it's very group friendly. They're welcoming your groups. So 
please take advantage of this. And just to let you know for our GTO users, um, the sample itinerary that you saw today will be loaded into the GTO system. And you can look at look for that under your um, itineraries and, and under the um, already the trips that have already been put in from our DMCs and DMOs. So um, keep your eye out for that. You know how to find that within our system. So again, Aino and Jonna, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank, thank you so you. much for having us. Thank you. And um, Angelica, if people wanted to find out a little bit more about Group Travel Odyssey, what can they do? They can hop right onto our website, which is grouptravelodyssey.com, where we continuously update with our latest information. Uh, we have access to you researching and going to our YouTube channel where you can see Coach and Goes. We're constantly giving you all of the latest and greatest so that you can better understand the software or join us if you want to. That's fantastic. And just a reminder, as Angelica mentioned, our other media presentation is called GTO Coach and Go. GTO Coach and Go happens every other Tuesday at two o'clock in the afternoon. So make sure to join us for those as well. And if you want to see any of these destination dispatch episodes, or if you want to see the Coach and Goes, you can go to our YouTube channel. So go to the Group Travel Odyssey YouTube channel. And again, make sure to subscribe to that so you have access to all of the fantastic uh, video and media presentations that we have as well. Now, I know Destination Dispatch, Dispatch this week was Helsinki-based. Uh, we learned a little bit more about Finland, but also we're going to continue the conversation next Thursday as well. And this, Stevie, this is also a 10 a.m. one next week, correct? Correct, 10 a.m. Yes. Eastern. So 10 a.m., we're going to learn even more about Finland. So make sure to join us uh, for that as well. And Stevie, if people want to tune into your to your podcast um how can we find out more where can we find destinations beyond expectations yeah destinations beyond expectations is the podcast uh designed for students of travel there's a new episode coming out this friday i'll ask you guys this have you ever heard of cruising ducks no <laughs> so it's like a new trendy thing happening right now on, on cruise ships uh, particularly with like family friendly cruise lines where it's sort of a game where crew members or travelers will bring these sort of mini rubber ducks onto a cruise with some instructions on, you know, like the rules of the game and how to post when you find a duck on Instagram or any social media site. It's a pretty cool concept. And I have uh, a great conversation coming up tomorrow, actually, the episode's dropping um, with Ilana from the Life Well Cruised blog. She's got a great blog, great YouTube channel. So Tune into that. You can go to the website, dbetravel.com, or you can listen on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, anywhere podcasts are available. That's excellent. Well, Angelica, Stevie, thank you so much for joining today so we can find out more about Helsinki. And to everybody watching, thank you for, for tuning in, and we will see you next week. Bring your coffee cups. Next. Thank you for watching this episode of Destination Dispatch. We invite you to stay connected with Group Travel Odyssey on Facebook, YouTube, and LinkedIn. And be sure to check out more of our media, including GTO Coach and Go and the Destinations Beyond Expectations podcast. Please visit our website, grouptravelodyssey.com, where you can learn more about GTO and request a demo. Group Travel Odyssey, business without boundaries.